Super Dirt Week, racing's biggest party is all new this year. It's racing, music, camping, and a huge Saturday night finale. See your dirt car racing heroes battle wheel to wheel all week for a chance at glory. Get your tickets at SuperDirtWeek.com or call 844-DIRT-TICKS. The 52nd running of Super Dirt Week, October 7th through the 12th. Be there. And welcome back here at the Heritage Hill Brew House for the online portion here of the show on QSportsTalk.com. And welcome to those who subscribe to the channel and get the notifications whenever the camera goes on. So uh, welcome to the folks joining us here in the stream chat and on camera, along with Coach Fran Brown. I'm Gomez from Gomez and Company on TK99 and TK105. If you have a question for Coach, thoughts, comments, put them in the stream chat. We'll get to as many as that we can here. Coach, and a jamming, jamming night here tonight at Heritage Hill Brewhouse. And great to see uh, the guys who were in here earlier from the uh, FM high school football team. Yeah, it was good. Good to see those kids. I, I got to watch some of that game, seeing they had a hard, they played a tough game this past week. So it's cool to see a lot of the kids there and just cool to have all the fans and you know, the community here, so it's good to have the community around. It sure is. And when you're watching, whether it's an FM school or your your son's college team, can you just kind of step back from the coaching role and just watch and enjoy a football game without, like, taking mental notes? Like, no, I no, always take mental notes, but <laughs> it's just not on me. <laughs> you know what I'm, so, I'm always taking mental notes. I'm always learning, watching what they do, uh, texting into uh, the coaches' group chat of the things that I see that we need to keep working on just from watching other people play and then just some of the things I see that are really good, I'm texting in and telling them what I saw and what guys do. Uh, well, some of the questions are already popping up here in the stream chat. Uh, Coach, somebody wants to know how Marlo is uh, feeling his day spirits high uh, at practice when he's whatever he's in. Yeah, he's doing well. He's actually, I'm out there, he's about to come by him and his um, girlfriend's about to come by my house oh. and uh, come over and just talk to him and hang out, make sure once a week I'm still just spending time with him to make sure that he's doing right mentally and things like that. And he's caught up in his school work, so they'll come over and, uh, you know, just have some dinner and things like that. You know, there's a, a couple guys that were able to practice this week who haven't been available, but still don't know if they'll be available for Friday night. Yeah, uh, I mean, you got to be talking about Justin Justice, Russell. Yeah. So yeah, he'll be playing this week. Um, so excited that he's back. And um, who else came back that hasn't been able to practice? Really, Justin's the only one that's definitely going to be playing him back. Uh, now, when you went down and watched your son play, uh, you had a chance to enjoy it and like tailgate. I heard a little bit of a yeah, conversation. Yeah. Like, how was that? Just for you don't get a chance to do that during the season uh, hardly at all. How was that experience? It was cool. It was different. It was more so. I got a two, a three year old daughter, so you know we was still occupied. So, but it was um, it was fun. You know, we had after the game, we got to meet a few other parents that Franny hangs with. Um, they made chili. They had different things they were doing, so we got to test like four different kinds of chili because they're I guess everybody in their family made a uh, pot of chili <laughs> so that was pretty cool and um, it was just good to see some of his teammates and to know that uh, their football team is doing a good job his head coaches hats off to him doing a good job raising young men and seeing the kids that were coming up to speak to me that I got a chance to talk to them and just see that my son's you know picking the right kids to hang with being around the right kids and he's at a good school it's a beautiful campus man St. Francis is a great campus so it was very thankful to see him. Now, when you were uh, young, like uh, these kids were here tonight from the Fayetteville Manly's High School team, and a lot of them obviously excited to meet you and get a, a handshake in, in a picture. Was there, when you were younger, was there a coach or somebody that you met when you were young that had an impact or made you want to pursue what you're doing right now? No, no, really. I just like Donovan Darius. He was the only person I knew that I got to meet personally right there. Was in college and doing stuff, so I would say Donovan Darius. Um, Really, uh, one of my friends, Dad, Dewan Wagner, and me are like good friends. We're really related. Um, but his father played in the NBA, so being able to, you know, just know Milt Wagner meant a lot. You know, I speak to Milt now all the time. But really, for me growing up, it wasn't. Any, it was, it was the uh, Milt Wagner was like our guy in our city from Camden, New Jersey, where we from. Milt Wagner was like, he was everything. Uh, question here, Ryan, in the, the stream chat says, Coach, I saw Ed Reed and other Hall of Famers uh, say the thing that they did to make them stand out was watch game tape on player tendencies aside from film sessions. 
Do you see that with any of the players on the team this year? Yeah, when they're all locked in, we give them routines, and then they try to take routines, and that's kind of what they do. But they watch a lot of film. Uh, this one here, uh, Coach, loved your line from earlier, I think last hour maybe with Matt Park, when you said that the kids are just focusing on winning the next game instead of where they are in the rankings. If you're not number one, that's just a good thought process and a good way to focus. Yeah, it's just what you play for. I think every coach in the whole country is probably doing that and pushing that. Like, you want to win a championship. You don't get involved in this to not win the championship. So just doing everything you can to put yourself in position to play in the final game of the year. Uh, this one, and I, I know you had a lot of thoughts earlier in the week on uh, Coach Taylor and uh, his history as a player and a coach, and I know you think very highly of uh, Coach Taylor at Stanford. Yeah, he's just a, a smart man. He's so a football he, guy. He's a real football player, uh, good football player, and he's a good football coach, and he's coached at every level, and he's won at every level, and he's done a good job, so... I know, just cool. It was, he, I thought he was a good man when I met him too this summer. He just really chill himself and very open and just, I like I like him. You know, I like who he is. So I can't wait for us to compete against each other, but then to continue to grow our relationship. You know. uh, Steve wants to know, uh, what will, is it, uh, if I'm reading it right, uh, Willis's role on this team be next season? So far, he seems to be a part of the goal line package. You, know, you just got to watch. You know, things change week to week. So, you know, you just got to watch. I think uh, Willis will be a complimentary piece to LaQuint, as I said early on. You know, it's only had two games, so you just got to keep watching them. And I think you haven't seen – you haven't really seen him, seen him yet, so you'll see him soon. Uh, kind of an out-of-the-box question for a coach. Somebody wants to know, well, who's the ma- most famous person in your phone contacts? The most famous person yeah. in my phone contact? If you had to call or text somebody, who would be, like, at the top of that list? I don't, I don't know. Really, like, I don't know what that... That's a little bit different with me, you know? Yeah. I don't really, like, get into that. I would say um, the most famous person, my wife. Good answer. <laughs> a good answer if she's watching. Yeah, <laughs> my wife. Nah, probably the... I was... I, I mean... Other the White Franey, the White Franey Hall of Famer. That's at the uh, top. I would say Keith Bullock, Donovan McNabb, a lot of the guys that play here, like those guys are pretty famous in sure. my opinion. So like those guys, um, yeah, I would say they're the most famous. If there was somebody that I could text, if I would want to get to know, <laughs> if there was one person I could text and I would like to learn from, I would like to learn from 50 Cent. You know, I already know Tom Coughlin, so I think he's extremely famous. Oh, yeah. I could text and talk to him all the time, football. But I would like to learn just the business world and, you know, different pieces from uh, 50 Cent. Wow, that's a good, uh, yeah. that's a good answer. Uh, how about this one, uh, Coach? Is the team on pace where you want them to be at the end of the season? Are they firing on the cylinders you want them to yet? We're, we're getting better. We'll see this, Saturday, this Friday night. You know, I think this Friday will be a good test. We're playing a really good football team that's coming here and uh, they want they to come in to prove something. So I think this will give us a, a good test of who we are and can we put it all together. You know, and I'm excited to see that. I want to see us put it all together and just go out and play free. Have fun. Uh, Jake wants to know, are you open to a new intro song to start a tradition like some other schools have? For example, Virginia Tech is the Metallica thing when, you know, when they come into the stadium and some other schools have that kind of thing. Is that something that you'd be open to? Uh, we like hits, so we like all types of music. Like, we like listening to Lil Durk. You know, everybody got different guys. They like NBA Young Boy. You know, it's different guys. So each week, it just depends, like, you know, um, at the end of the game, like, we've been listening to uh, Rich Homie Kwan, rest in peace. So last week, we played some type of way. But, um, you know, mainly right now, I think we've been coming out the dirt to a lot of stuff. So, but um, I think it's different songs because just kind of whatever, it's just, it's whatever, just whatever feeling is, whatever feeling, you know. Uh, with all the traveling that you do, Coach, and I know you had a chance to do some recruiting in the in the bye week, but somebody wants to know here what's the coolest place that you've traveled to, and it doesn't necessarily have to be because of recruiting, but just out of the country. The best place I've ever been to? Yeah. We go to the Bahamas every year, me and my wife and kids. It's uh, like our family trip that we go to, um, and I love going to the Bahamas, Atlantis. It's, uh, it's a great place, so we go there every year. It's been 
We've been going for a while now. It's like a, we went like seven years in a row outside of COVID. Oh, wow. And that's important to us to do it. And I'm hoping that we, God willing, we're able to continue to do that, to do that once I have grandchildren, Franny has children, and just make that a place that we're able to always go. You know, I always see people have, uh, you know, everybody has like a family reunions and things, but we want to be able to go to the Bahamas all the time. That's something that we want to do. You. We went, my wife and I were there. I could look up the year because uh, it was in the 90s, but staying at the resort and playing cards with Michael Jordan yeah, see, at, I, at the tables there. Yeah, I'm going to be at a different spot. I hear about that. That's, that's different <laughs> money. That's different. <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'm going to be over at the other spot. Yeah. It, was the, it was the weekend. I don't know if you remember, but he, he, he was still playing, but he, he cut his thumb on a cigar cutter. And then he had to get surgery and had to fly back to Chicago. But that's where he did it. So it was like that night, maybe, or the night after, in that same spot yeah, in Atlanta. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's it. It was just him against the table. And again, it was all roped off. And nobody else was playing. That's pretty legit. It was That's one legit. person I would like to meet. It, it, yeah, that night you couldn't. He was like, yeah, <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's playing, you know, he's playing let me, 10 let me, let me ask you, do you think he's the best basketball player all time? Yes. I cool. still put him at the top of the list. And I know there's some great players, and LeBron and some other great guys are fantastic, but as far as the whole picture of championships and intensity and everything else, I still think he's the best. Yeah, I got you. I agree with you. Uh, let me see your other questions. This is from Ryan. On January 16th of 2001, Coach, uh, Dewan Wagner scored 100 points against Camden County Tech where you yep. at that game. Yes, absolutely. You were? And then the next year he scored 60-something. Just uh, probably 70 something. He didn't want to really keep putting up too much points. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you for me, Dewan Wagner is the best athlete I've ever seen. Really? Yes. Yes. Like, like when I go to my basketball, like when you got to pick people, who would you go pick? I get to pick two guys. I'm picking Michael Jordan and Dewan Wagner. And that's like, we've been since I've been a little kid, about 19 years old, we've always won. I mean, buzzer beaters, he's hit so many buzzer beaters to help us win, just to do different things and just for him to go. So he's, um, you know, where I come from, DeJuan Wagner is, like, he's him. He's you him. Know, and his dad, Milt Wagner, did it first, and then now his son, DJ Wagner, is doing it. And, uh, but we've been, wow. like, some of that, one of my, one of my uh, closer friends in this world, we call each other cousins. That's my, that's my guy, but he's on another level. Uh, this question here, does playing in a dome impact players that you're recruiting? No, it's cool. I mean, because, you know, everybody try to talk to us about, talk to kids about how cold it is. I say, like, I really won't affect you doing football. Yeah. When it <laughs> don't. You know what I mean? We're and indoors. Like, hey. And why would you go out when it's cold? We don't go out. We put a coat on, you go where you're supposed to go when you come in the house. <laughs> so, like, that, that doesn't affect you. <laughs> uh, this one here, Shane wants to know about how much... Uh, work the guys put in in the bye week on special teams because obviously that was a an issue in the week two. Yeah, we were still doing it today. You know, it never stops. You know, we put not saying that we went and put more work into it. You do kind of focus on a little more and for, like making sure you're trying to make everybody pay more attention just to let them know that it's, it's important. But we do the same work. I mean, the same thing. You know, schedule's a schedule. Got to follow it. You know, just got to try to Make sure it becomes more detailed or get the players to lift and find a different way to coach them. Just because that's how you've been coaching them, that may not work that way. So let's figure it out how to do it the right way. Uh, our job is to coach the players, so we got to do that. Uh, Jake uh, wants to know who's the greatest football player ever from Camden. Greatest football player ever from Camden? Me. So, okay. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I'll um, <you> up there. <laughs> I would say we yeah. got Rashad Baker. Played in the league for a long time. That's who I played with and went at. Rashad Baker or Mike Rozier. Mike Rozier won the Heisman. Played sure. in Nebraska. So, like, those two guys were good. Um, Art Steele, Derek Ramsey, like those guys who were draft picks. Played in the NFL and also. But I would probably say Mike Rozier or Rashad Baker. Fadel Diggs is close. He was the Gatorade player of the year. You know what I'm saying? He did it twice. There. He did. So he's close. This depends on how he finishes out all the rest of this. Uh, this one here, uh, the question in the stream chat, again, on the QSportsTalk.com. It's our exclusive chat here with the coach. Uh, do you think our uniform design needs an upgrade, or do you like them? No, I like them. Well, We've got to stick to tradition. We'll get that uh, upgrades and all that other stuff when we get everything back the way it's supposed to be. But they tried to get me to uh, have us wear all orange 
for the uh, for this game this week. I was like, nah, we ain't doing that. We just let's wear the colors that are Syracuse. When you look at those colors, you see it, and that's like Syracuse, you know. And there's a certain thing that you wear when you're away, certain things you wear when you're home, and we gotta we gotta ingrade that more. Once we get that, then we can go and have a little throw-off jersey and things of that nature. But we gotta learn how to win in in these uniforms. Uh, another question here had to do with, and I, every coach I'm sure has the question about playing time and trying to guys who you recruited and you have on the team and you want them to be there and divvying it up and trying to get playing time. Did you ever come into consideration in a, in a game situation or it's like I got the guys in there that I need to win and you just manage the team and manage guys on the team regardless? You just ask me a lot. I don't really understand that question that you just said. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know really. Was, I can't read really what they wrote. Are you asking me, like, how do I play people? I, yes, I think in, okay. in a nutshell. That's, so that, I play the guys that practice well, that we're confident in being able to put in the game. And certain situations in the game, we play situation football, make sure that guys understand and know what, what they're in to give us the best chance to win. So it's always about the best player for that time, you know. Um, so what's your favorite time to play a game? You got a Friday night game at 7.30. There's been noon games. There's a noon game next week. You have a preference? Early, late? You want me to tell you the truth? Yeah. I like playing noon games so I could go home and play <laughs> on my birthday. I'm with you. <laughs> you get more time, right? <laughs> 7.30 is like you're waiting all day, you're anxious, uh -huh. and it's like, um, I like playing noon games. I get to go hang with my daughter, especially a noon game and win. Oh, it's even, no <laughs> even yeah, better. There's no better feeling in the world. I just get to go. I just like to hang out with my family. My grandmother lives with me. Um, I play cards with my grandma when I'm home all the time. So I'm more of a, like a family-oriented guy. Like, I love playing cards. I love playing tonk with them. Um, and I just like playing with my daughter. Like, honestly, I play with my son all the time. We were always throwing a ball in the house, doing something, something to make my wife cuss us all out. You know, it's just different things. So I just, I enjoy that because I don't get to do it all the time. But 12 noon, if we could play at 10, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in. We'll see what we can do. Uh, this question here, uh, Coach, what's your favorite or most memorable single play you've ever seen in a football game? My favorite, most memorable. Uh, I guess it doesn't say college or pro, so it could be any, I guess. Well, Georgia versus LSU, we blocked the kick, and Chris Smith picked it up and returned it for a touchdown, and I think that, like, opened the game up, and it was that's something memorable that I always remember. And uh, my other one, I won't even say that because then it would be a whole big thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was a really uh, good play, though. This one here uh, from Dominic, a coach. Uh, he says, I live in Greenville, North Carolina. My pastor is the chaplain for the ECU baseball team. Helping college students with their faith is important to the viewer here, Dominic. I was wondering how I can pray for you and your team. Oh, and whenever you want. You can pray for me all the time. Uh, my email is online, so it's comfortable. Um, you can pray for me right now, to be honest. Like, I love prayer. I need prayer. Um, I'm constantly learning how to pray um, and how to pray for things that happen that I might not want to go my way. So all the prayer that you could possibly get for myself and our football team and my family and everyone in Syracuse, period, we accept all the prayer you could give us down here in Syracuse. Um, so that would mean a lot to us. And thanks for watching it down in, in uh, Greenville, North Carolina. Appreciate that. Uh, this one here from uh, Lockout says, Coach, keep being genuine and honest. I would run through brick walls for you. And I'll run through a brick wall for you, too. Yeah, that's just common. That's just who I am, so I don't got time to try to that's it. fake nobody or sugarcoat the thing. I'm the it same is. guy every day. And you get up at uh, 525, working out at 605, yep. and that's you. Yeah. That's how you roll. Uh, this one here, uh, Ryan wants to know, Coach said that you like watching boxing and MMA. I think maybe we talked about that a week or so ago. Yeah. Uh, do you know uh, heavyweight champ John Bones Jones and the uh, Jones brothers, Art and Chandler, yeah, they, who played at Syracuse? The Jones brothers, yeah. And one of them, still, they still live around here. 
I think He's so, yeah. school here. They got the uh, cryo, uh, cryotherapy yeah. spot where they let a lot of our players go through it. They've been very helpful and extended hand out to help us and just to be involved with us. So those dudes are, they're good guys. You know, they love their school. Uh, and I mean, they were obviously good football players oh, too. Oh, sure. But uh, yeah, so I, I definitely know who they are. Uh, this uh, so watching. This is the beauty of uh, QSportsTalk.com, coaches. Is this viewer is in New York City. They're going to be at the East End Bar in New York, rocking Friday night. Uh, they got a sold-out guest list for a watch party, rooting for you and the team down in New York. That's what's up. Have a lot of fun. Yeah, right. Yeah, I hope y'all have a lot of fun down there. That's cool. That is fun. Uh, Coach, as you look at uh, Stanford, obviously on on Friday night, and you had some, you know, great thoughts on the, the coach and a lot of the players. What do you see when you're watching their tape? You're breaking it down now. And they got they got some playmakers. Ashton Daniels, quarterback is really good. Uh, Alec, I I can't pronounce his last name correct. I don't want to mess his name up. But they got a lot of good receivers. Ruben, Alec. Um, Ishmael, Tiger, those guys can play. Um, defense, the linebacker, eight and zero are really good. Corners, six, four. Uh, they got a lot of players. I watch numbers because I'm always seeing their numbers. Um, I think uh, their special teams coordinator is a good coach, and he's a good safeties coach. And then there's, um, their defensive coordinator, Bobby April, does a good job with just giving a lot of multiple looks. You know what I mean? So they... And they, we, got, we got our hands full. You know, they're coming in to play. They're good coaching staff, and they're changing the program and turning it. And you see they got so much better from week one to week two. And just watch all the things that they've done. So, I mean, and we got a guy that's a football guy. I like their coach, as you can tell. Um, I respect what they do. So, you know, I have some fun Friday night. You know, I can't wait to Friday to play them. Uh, this one here, uh, Coach, about the uh, guys on the sideline. And I know uh, Kyle, in the last game specifically, just really seemed energetic on the sideline. And obviously his leadership skills are really starting to shine. How important, the viewer here wants to know, is it for the guys to stay energized on the sideline if they're not directly involved? Uh, in everybody has a job. Whether you plan or not, you have a job. See, the thing with us is this. You may not like your job, but you need to embrace your job in order to be able to change it. If you don't embrace what you're doing, like everybody, like I was, I worked at a hospital. I was the environmental service manager. I wasn't the head of the whole piece, but then I started to run the whole piece up. But I had to like everything I had to do. I had to make sure that our staff was right, knew who was coming to work on different times, and I had to do that. And did I want to work? Did I want to make the money that the lady ahead of me made? Yeah, I did, but that wasn't my job. So until I embraced the job that I had and I was thankful for it, happy, and I worked extremely hard at that job, you got to do that job really, really well so you can change that job. Because I believe God's watching. And as long as you work extremely hard and you do it all the right way, whatever you want is coming. You just got to believe in yourself and then everything else works itself out. How long ago was that? Just out of curiosity, before coach, when you had that uh, I was check. working in 2009. I still got my, my wallet in the car. I got my check from uh, Crothel Health Services because I worked at UPenn. And it just had... Uh, when I got paid every two weeks, and it just reminds me of, like, work. I was a substitute teacher. I was working there, and I was also training kids before I went and got a job at Temple. So I was working, like, three different jobs. So, you know, that song about, like, Kevin Gates, I don't get tired. I got six jobs. That was, like, kind of me. <laughs> it so was, it was like, motivation every day. Yeah. I remember my uh, first job, because you got paid every two weeks, and my first paycheck was two hundred and fourteen dollars. Yeah, mine's a that little, was mine's a little more weeks. mine's a little more than that. My <laughs> wife might have left me if it was two fourteen. So it was a little bit more than that, but it was um it was a blessing and I understood and I learned what it was to save, what it was to be a man and try to take care of the household off of working and getting paid bi weekly. So I was thankful that I got a chance to do that and I got a chance to run a department because it set me up to be able to run a team too. You know, you got a chance to do different things. And there was a lot of disgruntled people at times. They didn't like what they were doing. So you had to be able to manage them and talk sure. to them and motivate them to want to clean all of the hospital rooms and to want to clean and do different things and had to show them the 10-step cleaning process and make sure they followed all that stuff. So it was pretty cool. It's a head coach, Fran Brown. And uh, thanks to everybody for coming out here at Heritage Hill Brew House. And thanks to everybody here on QSportsTalk.com. Go Orange Friday night. We'll see you next Thursday here, Coach. Appreciate that. All right. See you guys. Peace. Thanks, bro.